Okay, welcome everyone to the annual DC SID. Let's do that again. All right. So welcome everyone to the annual Dynamic Coalition on Small Island Developing States session. Um, as you know, for those who are looking, it's mostly an online session, but I'm happy to report that there are actually folks in the room who've actually joined us today. My name is Tracy Hackshaw. I am one of the co-chairs of the DC SIDS, as we call ourselves. And to my left, we actually have Maureen in person and on site after a very long um, online um, version of Maureen. So Maureen is in person. Welcome, Maureen. In the room today, we have some colleagues from, I think, mostly the Caribbean. So I'm seeing SG Taylor from the CTU, Caribbean Telecoms Union. I'm seeing Bevel Wooding from Aaron. I believe that's what you're representing today. I'm seeing Niall Harper, who is Caribbean by, I'm not sure, citizen, but a man of the world now. So I'm seeing Nia Nanan from the CTU. So welcome Caribbean folks. I'm seeing a lot of guests coming in. And I'm seeing some rapporteurs from the youth ambassadors, I assume, who are trying to meet me and I've only met one of them. Welcome Daniel and I'm assuming Timiladi and Paola. And then we're missing um, Nanda who wanted to see me. And I'm not sure where she went, but I'm sure she'll join us shortly. So welcome everyone. Welcome Nigel, the deputy SG from the CTU who's joined us in the room as well and any others. Please feel free to join us in the discussion as we begin. So to, without further ado, as I've been stalling for some time, people to join, um, let's toss to S.G. Rodney Taylor from the Caribbean Telecoms Union to give us a brief update as to what's been going on in the space in the internet governance sphere, the digital sphere, the ICT sphere in the Caribbean region. I hope our colleagues at home are awake. If not, they'll watch us on the recording. Welcome. Testing. Okay, good. Good afternoon, morning, night. Um, pleased to be a part of this discussion today, and uh, I think it's a very important one. And um, I am, as pointed out, Rodney Taylor, Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. And for those who don't know, we are uh, an intergovernmental organization based in the Caribbean. We are a CARICOM specialized institution dealing with ICT policy development, internet governance, and so on. Um, we have, uh, and I, since I've been, um, well, SG for just about um, two and a half, approaching three years, and I think one of the things I've sought to do is, is to try to strengthen the relationship, um, well, in the region, and, and also um, raise the level of Caribbean participation in IG spaces, uh, generally. Um, I think, just to give an overview, um, even though we talk about small island developing states, as you would know, it's not necessarily one homogenous group. Um, there's a diverse group of countries in there in, in terms of lang there's diversity of language, diversity of cultures, diversity of economies. We have some, um, some of our member states are um, based on oil and gas, <laughs> most are based on tourism, of course, uh, and so on. So there's a diverse, when we talk about SIDS, even though we try to build that coalition, there's significant diversity. Um, of course, there's there's significant strength as well. Uh, I think the UN recognizes about 38, um, and that within any international process represents a very strong number, in particular if there is uh, coordination on foreign policy issues or internet governance issues or ICT policy issues globally within spaces say like the ITU. And in fact, last year what we sought to do uh, in the ITU Planning Potential Conference is to, first of all, take a strong Caribbean delegation and to collaborate with our um, brothers and sisters in the Pacific Islands and so on um, to support um, you know, the leadership positions and have common positions on the proposals that uh, went forward to the, through the ITU process. Uh, we've been seeking to do the same thing within um, other spaces like ICANN, for example, and in fact we've been instrumental in getting uh, ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, to, to actually initiate a study on the involvement and participation of small island developing states within ICANN 
um, because we believe there is um, there's room for improvement. Let me just put it that way, in terms of how we engage. And, and in fact, the sheer volume of meetings within ICANN and the other uh, international organizations, even the ITU, makes it difficult to track all of these processes from a small island developing state's perspective because you only have so many people, actually. So what has worked, uh, of course, last year we held our first small island developing states internet governance forum. Uh, we had some very high level representation, including the UN tech envoy, uh, Amandi Singhil. And uh, we were very pleased that we were able to execute that. Uh, I believe it's, it's been recognized as an NRI, even again, even though SIDS is not a geographic region, but um, uh, we were pleased with that recognition. And of course, even hosting that, it had its own challenges in terms of the differences in time zone. And because we try to hold it not as two separate events, you know, the Pacific Caribbean, but as really one uh, homogenous one one event, and therefore the challenges with either getting up early or staying up late, just so we could have one uh, conversation together, of course, was challenging. Um, we are um, pretty much involved in the GDC process. We've we've made contributions in that. And that process, some of the deep dives you may be familiar with, we've made statements and in particular emphasized the need for SIDS um, to be given special consideration as we go towards the summit of the future. That, um, you know, we do have a unique perspective. We are limited in, 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 um, in size and the resources and therefore we may not be able to actively participate as some of the bigger economies, but we do have a voice and we are looking towards the SIDS 4, which takes place, which is the UN Summit on Small Island Developing States, which actually takes place in one of our member states, Antigua and Barbuda, next year. And we've been advocating for a greater emphasis on um, digital governance and digital policies. And in fact, ideally, we'd love to have an IGF within that uh, SIDS 4 space. Um, I will stop there for now, but um, I think those are just to give you an uh, overview of where we are, what we're thinking, what we have done. And I would say we would really celebrate, I would say, uh, the collaboration we did last year for the SIDS, SIDS IGF, uh, for the work we've been doing within ITU and within, uh, within ICANN, uh, but we think certainly there's room for improvement. Thank you. Thank you very much, S.G. Rodney. Um, so before we move on to the Pacific, I want to acknowledge my Caribbean colleagues in the room who may want to add anything to what Rodney has said. So uh, perhaps, Bevel, you may want to say anything. Do you have anything to add? Not this time. Anyone else would like to add anything before we move on? For the Caribbean side of life? Nope. Okay. So without further ado, let's move on to Maureen, who is my co-chair. She's from the Cook Islands in the Pacific, and let's get the Pacific update. Thanks. <laughs> thank, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks, Tracy, and, and thank you so much, um, uh, Rodney, for that, uh, for that introduction. And I'd, what I'd like to do at this particular point in time is, is um, well, first of all, I you know, thank you all for, for, for coming to the session, but um, I, and f it's really pleasing for me is, is um, as Tracy mentioned, um, I was here for the 2008, I was at the IGF for the 2018 um, launch of the of the of DC SIDS and then um, decided to go remote for the rest of the time. And so this is my first time back and I'm really, you know, really pleased to, to be here. But I would like to introduce, um, s there have been some interesting things that are happening uh, within the Pacific region and, and I've, I'm very pleased to be able to say that I have some, uh, some people on, on uh, the Zoom uh, call who, can, uh, who are going to sort of like report on some of the things that w have been happening with regards to um, the um, Pacific IGF, which um, is something that, you know, we had tried to sort of like uh, coordinate something with the Caribbean in this respect, but there was something happening within our region, so we um, continued with that. And I've got Andrew Malivere, who's um, actually the president of the Pacific Islands chapter of the Internet Society, who uh, who 
uh, of the the PAC I, um, the PAC IG, IGF um, side of things anyway, and he's going to report. I also have um, Sri Langakali, who's been involved in cybersecurity um, issues in the um, in the Pacific, and um, and I did uh, have got um, uh, another member of our community, uh, Poor Hunter, who's the director of um, Director of ICT in the um, in the Cook Islands, and she has actually said that she'd rather just follow the discussion, and <laughs> and she will um, join in when she can. But first of all, let me introduce you to Andrew, um, and he will give you a very brief um, intro into what happened at the PAC IGF. Andrew, thank you, Maureen. Uh, just checking the audio. Is my audible to everyone? Thank you. So thank you so much for this opportunity, Marin and uh, Tracy, and for organizing this uh, session so we can uh, sort of chip in a bit from the Pacific. So my name is Andrew, and I uh, currently chair the Pacific IGF, which is uh, being hosted by the uh, Pacific Island chapter of the Internet Society, Pacific ISOP. And uh, Pacific AGF is not new. We have had, uh, I think this year we had the fifth Pacific AGF that we, uh, we had in Pacific. Um, the last one that we had was the one before, uh, the one this year was in, uh, was held in uh, <clears throat> sort of a hybrid uh, mode where we have online sessions, but we, still, we did have the, uh, the islands have their own uh, hubs. So it was a, a different way of doing it, but it was a great session back in 2021 where we have probably seven, seven hubs. And, uh, um, and then with the you know online community, it was held in parallel with uh, AP Tilding. That was when we got that support. And this year, it was the first time again after COVID that we were able to host this face-to-face uh, -face in Brisbane uh, in back-to-back to, -back to uh, APR IGF and the NETIM, which is the Australian uh, uh, IGF. It was a great session. We had, a two, we had two days of uh, sessions where we discussed uh, uh, emerging issues, like emerging technologies, uh, and AI and GP chat and all that uh, cryptocurrency. We, lay, we then went on to sort of discuss the meaningful connectivity but, uh, within the different island states and how this uh, the states whether the, whether or not each state has a policy or uh, access policy that we we are seeing. So we're seeing a lot of differences there from different islands and then we had some discussions on the digital skills and that leads to uh, legal frameworks in terms of cyber security and uh, in there we can see a lot of improvements since the last few years a few of the countries have already have already enacted the laws on cyber security which is a, what was a, which was really a good sign that we, can, we have seen and then we we had uh, sort of uh, the sessions, smaller sessions. And we ended the meeting with uh, a look at the opportunities that we have in, in the Pacific, uh, how we can sort of pull together, pull resources together to make sure that uh, we lift the sort of the whole Pacific, uh, you know, level of security, cyber security and legislations and, you know, that level to sort of uh, a uniform level where the Pacific can be seen as um, a region that uh, has some strides in, especially to do with them, to do with the, their own, uh, you know, internet related uh, legal frameworks. So that was basically what uh, we had this year. And, um, it was um, supported by um, 
www.ai.au or IODA and internet and said I can and uh, APTLD and we have also had um, IGF uh, I, yes we had some support from uh, IGF as well so it was a, a great session those who were there uh, Maureen was there and a few others uh, it was a great session that also is a stepping stone for the next uh, IGF that we're going to have. Hopefully next year we're going to have another IGF, but this one has put us sort of on another level. We have recognition from, you know, IGF HQ. So the link is there. Unfortunately, we have not had the IGFs nationally in our islands. We have had one from Vanuatu. Uh, it's still there, struggling to get on its feet. But uh, for other islands, we do not have that. So when we had this regional uh, sort of uh, IGF plays a key role for the Pacific Islands. So Maureen, I think I'll have to stop there for now. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, um, Andrew. Um, one of the um, things that he mentioned was, of course, a, a um, was cybersecurity, and um, Sheree Langakali is uh, actually talking a, a very interesting discussion on um, on on sort of uh, disaster management, and uh, I'd like her to sort of like just explain very briefly what her session was about. And uh, Sheree, over to you. Thanks, Maureen. Hi, everyone. Can I just test my audio? Can you hear me clearly? Awesome. Uh, I will probably, I wanted to, well, I wanted to sit back like uh, poor and listen it, but there were some important updates that I thought uh, uh, were worth mentioning from the region. Uh, the session that I had at the APRI GF uh, together with the GFCE, uh, we worked with APNIC and uh, Sir Tonga to speak about stories from the Pacific uh, in terms of uh, um, the human side, when there is an incident in the region, and then um, in the case of uh, Tonga's most recent incident, uh, what happened, who in the communities were affected, who weren't they expecting to be affected, and how did they handle it, and uh, really came down to whether there were standard operating procedures that were in place uh, in, uh, on how they should be able to handle it, handle it and uh, where did they get the kind of assistance from. And then this uh, this session, uh, we did it in collaboration with the guys that are doing the best practice forum on cybersecurity for the IGF. Um, right now, there is a project uh, working group working on uh, ransomware stories from around the world, and and we have been feeding in uh, the stories from the Pacific. Where at the, at that APR IGF session, we had the story about Tonga, we had the story about a ransomware attack when it happened in Samoa and also a little bit on uh, when that happened in Fiji in the middle of COVID-19. Uh, then right after that, uh, just about last week, the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise uh, Pacific Hub launched in uh, Nandi uh, on the margins of a, that was called a Pacific Cyber Capacity Building and Coordination Conference. And this was put together by the uh, GFC Pacific Hub, the Oceania Cybersecurity Center and uh, partners of the Blue Pacific, uh, where we've realized that uh, there is in fact an oversaturation of capacity building efforts in the region and they may, might be time to sit down and work out how can we coordinate better to avoid duplication and uh, also you know to in in the context of the march of the region how can capacity building efforts be delivered a lot of times uh, there are template based solutions a lot of times just because it worked in the US or the UK doesn't mean that it's going to work exactly the same way in the Pacific and taking into consideration the Pacific culture. At this uh, capacity building conference last week, we had about 22 different countries represented. 15 of those were Pacific Island countries. It was nice for us for the first time to have countries like Niue, Palau, as well as Marshall Islands represented. And uh, we're looking at a coordinated approach uh, with a regional agenda, which we're putting together uh, to feed into the Global Cyber Capacity Building Conference, which will be held in Ghana later in October. And then with the support of working together with the Pacific Island Forum, because the Pacific Island Forum head of leaders meeting is also coming up in November. How can we all, you know, everybody's doing around the same things, facing the same issues. How can we learn to work together? Um, on another note, uh, I have recently joined NetSafe New Zealand 
and this is part of a project in the Pacific, which will be de delivering capacity cyber cyber safety materials to seven Pacific Island countries. And so uh, there is a conference in October where we have uh, fellows coming from these Pacific Island countries to come and sit down and discuss how exactly this content can be delivered based on the needs of these Pacific Island countries. I will uh, that I will stop for now, Maureen. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll probably leave it for later. Thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot, um, uh, Sheree. And uh, yes, the others um, can contribute to uh, the discussion sort of like later on in the thing. But if I can just carry on. Um, you know, I first of all, I you know, um, we've got Rodney up here. And, um, you know, I'd just like to um, add my thanks to Rodney and Nigel and uh, the CTU team um, for their continued support and um, an involvement in the activities of um, our, our coalition, and more um, especially for embracing and nurturing the interests of Pacific and other SIDS within the, um, the support that they already give to to the Caribbean. And you know we're really really grateful for this. Um, but looking at our topic today. Um, one of the things, you know, we're pretty much aware, like one of the, the um, our topic is, of course, sort of like, you know, like how can we as a coalition sort of like be um, more effective in the way uh, we can communicate with each other and support each other? And um, we're actually sort of like looking at sort of like developing a, a, some kind of platform which would be useful for us. Um, and we're already aware there are a number of platforms that are provided for community groups, such as um, like the UNDP um, SIDS community, which focuses on climate change. There's the Commonwealth um, of Learning, which looks at um, sort of courses to support SIDS in their education and development of um, their development goals. But PC SIDS looks at things a lot more um, broadly in a wider context um, in the internet economy. And um, meeting the more global needs of our coalition, um, which will actually encourage us to maintain personal connections with each other and build that global community that we're actually trying to to build within um, with SIDS across the um, across the the world. And just to start off with start off things, um, you know, from a personal perspective, I had two key takeaways from my experiences during this year. And um, that I sort of thought of what, you know, to help to start some um, conversations between you and us um, about um, what we might do. And firstly, um, I'm not quite sure if many of you attended any of the Virtual Island Summit um, sessions that were organised recently by Island Innovation. Um, and there were, I mean, there were participants from SIDS all over. And um, unfortunately, the timing is never right for the Pacific, and so that I was only able to sort of like capture one session, which really interested me, and it was um, a session on preparing young people for work in an island context. And what uh, um, what interested me and pleased me, of course, was the fact that there were Caribbean participants, and there was Keith Nurse from Trinidad and Tobago, and Orlando Hewitt from the Barba from Barbados. And they were sharing their educational programs with, um, you know, with other SIDS from around the world. And this is an example of what we too could be sharing more regularly in our own DC communities. I think that this is, you know, something that we could be building on. But my second takeaway was from the beginning of the year when I took part in an e-learning course on digital identity for trade and development, which was specifically created for SIDS by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Um, by the way, they also have a new course coming up on legislation for anyone who's interested. But for this particular course, and while only half of the enrolled participants actually completed the course, 70% of the um, graduates were from the Pacific and the Caribbean um, regions. 60% were women. And I have to mention the big successes, <coughs> sorry, which came from Trinidad and Tobago, where 33 out of the 39 people who were actually enrolled actually completed the course, and Grenada, where 14 out of 17 um, 
participants actually competed for. Uh, and an am amazing and understandable result when you sort of know what sort of like support they, they get within the region. And, um, and although like the Pacific and African um, SIDS, you know, uh, ha also had their successes, um, I just couldn't help but think that there could be, there could have been ways in which we, as a, as a community of SIDS, could have actually sort of like supported each other a little bit more and probably had a little bit more success from other um, SIDS groups. Um, especially as this was a free and very valuable course, but also especially for those of us who are actually involved in digital transformation um, in our regions. But for this reason, um, we definitely need a model of platform that is owned and operated by us, the people who will use it. And I envisage a form, and I, s and I saw this term, platform cooperativism, uh, which is a business model, but with a focus on human rights, fighting inequality, and creating a more democratic digital economy. But this is the reason that we're actually here today, and that's to hear your ideas about how we could best progress this coalition goal. So, um, Tracy, I'm going to pass it back to you because you can um, work with the audience and I'll work with these guys online. Thanks. Thanks, Maureen. Yes, and that was an excellent segue, Maureen, into the actual topic of what we are doing today, which is the um, addressing the, the challenges that we face as SIDS um, trying to get a digital platform up and running. And that platform could be either a solution of some sort, uh, but more likely a sustainable, um, moving, very organic environment that we could really work with. To kick it all off, um, I'm going to call upon my colleague from UNESCO. Um, let me get pronounce your name correctly. Tatavik Gregorian. Did I do OK? All right. So UNESCO has been um, working on Internet University Universality Indicators. And this year, um, UNESCO has been working with some Pacific SID South in, in doing some of this work. Maybe you could help us along the lines in trying to figure out um, what we can do if UNESCO has anything available or what they've been doing in the SIDS. Um, so you can give us a quick report upon that. Maybe some suggestions as to what we can do about this digital platform. Feel free to join us here if you it's easier, or you can go to the mic, whichever you think is. All right, well, you can grab this. Um, thank you very much, hello every, uh, everyone. Um, I'm actually very happy to hear more about uh, this dynamic coalition and to find out uh, more about uh, what you're doing. Many, many things were new to me. Uh, we've been working on SIDS uh, uh, for a very long time, but um, this particular initiative of Internet Universality Indicators have been uh, kicked off uh, in the past few years. So basically, Sorry. Sorry. Is this good? Yeah. Uh, so the idea of internet universality. So is this is the uni internet universality is the position uh, of UNESCO on the internet, the official position, which is internet should be based on uh, the principles of human rights. It should be open to all, um, accessible to all, and um, Rome. Uh, nurtured by multi-stakeholder uh, participation and address cross-cutting issues such as gender equality, uh, safety and security online, environment and um, uh, sustainable development goals, so we call it ROMX. And uh, Simon here is a technical advisor to UNESCO who is also coordinating uh, the project um, in South Pacific seats. So basically this is a holistic tool which uh, helps states um, or uh, stakeholders who want to do a voluntary assessment of the internet development at the international level, uh, at the national level. And I highlight voluntarily because uh, it's owned by the, by the national stakeholders and UNESCO is there to p uh, provide guidance and support. Uh, so they use this uh, framework which consists of 303 indicators, um, which s sounds a lot, but the idea is to make sure we have 109 core indicators uh, which the uh, uh, form the basis of uh, this work. 
and then these additional um, indicators to make sure that the national context uh, is uh, taken into consideration, then the national stakeholders take it and um, use it according to their context. So then uh, the assessment set of internet de uh, development is done uh, based on these indicators and principles. And then this helps the uh, country really uh, form um, an idea map. Um, uh, first of all, the policies out there, the opportunities, challenges, and areas of improvement and formulate actionable policy recommendations for all stakeholders concerned on how to move forward and how to improve. Um, so I should highlight also the process. The process is based on multi-stakeholder participation. So at the outset, uh, um, states who carry out these uh, assessments, they form a multi-stakeholder advisory group consisting of uh, the um, ministries, relevant ministries, civil society organizations, international organizations, academia, private sector, and um, all possible relevant stakeholders who guide the process and who participate in the process. So it's a really participatory uh, uh, process. And um, in the end, they come together to sort of validate what we call a validation workshop, the results um, of the report to really make sure sure that um, and confirm that everybody's voice is heard and um, the areas uh, concerned to their area of expertise are uh, truly reflected in the report. And then, of course, uh, we hope that this multi-stakeholder advisory group continues their work and they cascade this work to implement the policy recommendations which, um, which um, are formulated in these reports. So we had very excellent um, uh, results. Uh, so the project is ongoing in 34 countries with six countries having already published it. And what's uh, unique about this um, process is that it's not only relevant for developing countries, seeds, uh, it's relevant for all countries. We have countries like Germany who did it and published it and it was uh, presented in their national parliament and reflected in uh, national policies. We have it in Africa, 15 countries in Africa, inc including actually Capo Verde. Uh, we have it in Latin America uh, and Caribbean one um, in Dominican Republic and 12 in South um, um, Asia, uh, Asia and the Pacific. So they really help um, inform the policy and, uh, and we had, uh, for example, results reflected in digital strat uh, strategies of a country um, uh, or helping inform the uh, laws and regulations. Now, uh, specifically on seeds, as I mentioned, we have it, um, uh, we launched it in February uh, in Dominican Republic and Capo Verde actually has already finalized the report. It's in the process of publication and we launched it in uh, the South Pacific in five countries, uh, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, Tonga, uh, Fiji. Uh, so the process is ongoing, and if Simon would like to later on uh, add, uh, so the idea is uh, that what's, uh, what's really great also about this project in the South Pacific now that it's a project that covers diverse areas, um, and it's uh, implemented by seven UN agencies, and the idea is to support uh, the uh, economic diversification um, in, in these islands, um, especially uh, working in the areas which were hardest hit um, uh, after the COVID. And the idea would be actually also to, to, to address different components, including you mentioned that uh, there was training um, for youth to prepare them for work. So actually this, um, this project um, has a target audience or uh, beneficiaries of youth, j um, uh, women, um, and marginalized groups and part of this project will be actually uh, supporting uh, and creating job markets um, and also providing training um, uh, for various stakeholders. So this is, for example, part which ILO will do. 
and from our side, we will support the, the islands by mapping these digital policies and putting forward uh, policy recommendations. And for example, the other UNESCO uh, section, for example, will help to digitalize music industry, which based on our assessment uh, was one of the hardest hit, um, which uh, digitalization of this interest um, uh, industry would help to address uh, various needs um, and support this uh, the, 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 the economic diversification process. This is in a nutshell, and um, we would be very happy to uh, to cooperate uh, if, if, if you see any areas. The assessments are ongoing in the Dominican Republic and um, five seats, a couple of very days now finalized, but uh, it's a process that will continue and uh, we will be happy to welcome any contributions and we'll be ha very happy to cascade it in, uh, in more seeds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I vote that nomination cease, and I think we will accept that offer from UNESCO of cooperation um, in building out this, this collaboration environment. I think that's a good starting point, and I think we can reach out to you afterwards to see how best we can collaborate, because as you know, we have a good um, network of the SIDS and, and those people doing the work in the region, especially on the ground. So I think that's a very good starting point. So let, let's definitely, I'm glad you came today appreciate it and then let's let's work together and see what we can do to make this happen um, so on this overall topic of collaboration and working on this on this platform um, as you as we mentioned before as um, Maureen hinted at earlier as well the SIDS IGF is supposed to be sort of a ongoing thing so it's not an event it's a it's a collaboration environment such as what the IGF is supposed to be. You know, in between events, things are supposed to be happening. You can use the digital platforms to make it work. So as I said, we, we were thinking, instead of limiting ourselves to just events, we need to find a way to not have um, us circling around you know, a date or two days a year. And if it doesn't happen, then what happens? So we want to ensure we, we, we keep that moving. Um, so I know that my colleague to my right, S.G. Rodney Taylor, has a lot of ideas on this. So I'm going to put it back to him for some thinking on this. Um, I believe he's going to speak about what's been going on with the Caribbean IGF and how that's been like, evolving. And I also think he may have some ideas what may happen in the region next year um, as there's a conference coming up, a UN conference on SIDS, and then maybe an opportunity to, to do some work leading up to that. So. Let me um, pass to you, S.G. Taylor, and see what can work for your ideas. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Um, thanks again. Um, it would be remiss of me. I'm sure I couldn't go back home if I didn't say that, um, well, this year we had the 19th uh, IGF, and it is the longest running uh, into the IGF uh, in the world, and next year we celebrate 20. So um, Nigel has been, you know, one of these, these stalwarts, his chief, one of the chief resource persons behind the CIGF. And, um, you know, of course, it is an event, yes. Um, and a lot of things happen around events. Of course, it's an opportunity to raise the profile of the discussions. You get a lot of media attention. You know, you kind of you know, work towards it. The good thing about ours, though, is that we have... Um, been able to develop a policy framework. Uh, so coming out of the process, rather than just talking about topics, we continue we use the CIGF as a platform for continued engagement with the community, but also to update that policy framework, which gives um, guidance to our member states on things like establishment of IXPs, on cybersecurity policies, adoption of IPv6 addressing, and so on. Um, so that, I think we are, What's the version, Nigel? Four, 4.0. Right, so we, we, we will be updating that to 4.0 this quarter. A number of new topics were introduced um, this year. We had high level representation again from the UN Tech Envoy. We had a f traditional support that we always get from Aaron, our good colleague here, Bevel, the American Registry for Internet Numbers. We have Einar here as well. 
from that same organization. Uh, we had support, as always, from uh, the ICANN, um, just Albert Daniels, who is the Senior Stakeholder Engagement Manager. Um, Shernan Osepo, who has since moved on from ISOC, but Shernan has also been, a, and ISOC has been a stalwart supporter. And of course, Kevon Swift, who is the Head of Public Affairs for LACNIC, also s spoke. Um, and they give, as we do always, we don't take for granted that uh, our stakeholders, and we try to encourage new stakeholders, in fact, to come. So we go back through what is internet governance um, and why, why is it important to, to the Caribbean. In fact, this year we used, as we did last year, we used a social media influencer, again, because we wanted to broaden the appeal. You know, we don't want to be speaking to the same audience year after year, but we want uh, young people involved, new people involved, to bring uh, wider perspectives to it. Uh, we did have a specific capacity building session on the ICT indicators to measure connectivity and support policy development. So right in line with what was just presented, um, we have been trying to push a regional framework for capturing this ICT data so that it, we can better inform, in a better inform policy. And of course, the ITU itself is doing some work in this area and we'll be releasing its new um, framework um, this year, I believe. We had uh, another capacity building session around cybersecurity, and we had, we looked at what was going on globally and um, uh, within even the UN, for example, we had a presentation from the, um, the Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions and Head of Cybercrime and Digital Forensics unit in Jamaica, uh, Ms. Andrea martin Swaby, And Jamaica has been doing a lot within the UN uh, on the issue of cybersecurity and cybercrime and in trying to um, give a perspective from the Caribbean on um, UN resolutions that are seeking to, uh, a UN re resolution in particular that is seeking to have global agreements on, uh, on cybersecurity, um, so the UN resolution on cybersecurity. Um, we had presentations from the Inter-American uh, Committee Against Terrorism, CICTE, um, as well as Ambassador Claudio Piguero of the DR, who is uh, recognized even within the UN as a, a foremost expert on, on cybersecurity and cybercrime. Uh, we, in addition, we had, I should mention also, the second youth IGF. We kind of broke it up, so we had first day um, of the CIGF, then we moved into this youth IGF, second youth IGF, uh, again planned by Caribbean young people and uh, executed by them. And um, we looked at how we could leverage ICTs for Caribbean youth development ahead of the Global Digital Compact. And actually you've spoken on that, Tracy, uh, representing TT Mag. We had um, an associate, uh, Filippo Pierre, Pierre Rosi, was an associate expert in the UN um, SG's Tech Envoy office. So I wouldn't go into all of the topics, but um, AI, of course, featured prominently, uh, of course, with the young people, and th that is something that's very topical. Um, addressing policy and regulatory challenges, guidelines for AI development, much like what uh, discussion the discussion that took place this morning in the open forum. Uh, we then resume the these day two with uh, high level presentations from the um, stakeholders I mentioned. We had a, s a special presentation as well from Chengitai Masango, who's no stranger to us, um, and also Mr. Amandi Singh Gill. Um, Nigel, my deputy, gave an update on the CIGF um, a vision, mission, and goals for those who weren't um, paying on the way ahead as we ap approach 20. Um, next year, like I said, and uh, the intention is to go back to our hometown where we launched the uh, IGF in 20, um, 2010, 20, 20, 20, 2005, sorry, <laughs> look at my maths, um, in Guyana. So we're working with Guyana to, to make that happen. Um, then we, we spent the afternoon working through the updates on the policy frameworks um, so that, uh, again, we can make sure we added to topics such as AI and so on that we had, had previously not, not been addressed. We looked at some hot topics, um, AI, again, opportunities, risks, and challenges. We looked at um, fake news and deep fakes and these kinds of things. Uh, we 
we had Diplo Foundation involved there and a company called Star Apple based in Jamaica actually um, who, were, who was able to demonstrate uh, you know deep fakes and so on and how these things can be misleading especially in uh, how they impact the elections and so on um, bridging the digital divide accessibility and inclusion we had presentations from ISOC and from the telecoms authority and from Amazon we had a presentation on the project Kuiper and how they were using these LEO satellites to bridge those connectivity gaps. Another thing that was of a hot topic was the fair share contribution, um, what um, persons are calling OTTs, over-the-top services, and their impact on um, the ability of operators to build out their, their regional networks. So how these over-the-top services are impacting the regional de development. Um, so those are some of the topics I encourage you. We are actually working. We haven't quite finalized the report coming out of that, but um, this quarter we will be able to provide. But I think we had about 31 countries represented in 130 something. Of course, we had the updates from our our the uh, national IGF in Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Haiti, and the UN IGF, of course. Um, so, we you mentioned you mentioned um, the well I, I mentioned initially the summit in uh, in Antigua that takes place next year. We have tabled a you know a suggestion. We've been saying that it would be um, while it is event driven. Yes, uh, it would be a good opportunity perhaps to have another SIDS uh, be worked towards that. And I believe a platform, a digital platform, would help us because. Um, the hosting of the event itself draws attention to it, gives us a target to work towards. But what we really want is the intercessional engagement. How do we continue to engage? Not just within the UN IGF, but I mentioned ITU, right? And it very often it's the same stakeholders who are representing the region in these, in these uh, organizations. So a, a unified platform that uh, gives us the opportunity to consolidate these issues so that even within ICANN, for example, we know the community there, we advance the issues together. Um, we, you know, we try to influence policy uh, that because no one will speak for us, we have to speak for ourselves. So um, how do we maintain that communication and leverage the same group across all of these various um, IG processes globally um, or ICT policy development? Um, like I said, ITU, ICANN, ARIM even, and so on, and there are other processes as well that, that, uh, that I mentioned. So I think working towards using this huge opportunity, right, the SIDS 4 in Antigua and Barbuda, I think we should advocate for um, some engagement there, um, given the, the profile of it. But work towards that. And of course, next year, too, is the, is the summit of the future, where the GDC, the Global Digital Compact, will be tabled. And I think this is a huge opportunity for us, and um, we really ought to see how we can set that as sort of the uh, a, a time frame or deadline, but um, see how we can develop digital platforms, <laughs> maybe with the support of UNESCO and, and others, um, to keep the engagement more active, time zones considered and so on, but a platform that allows us anytime day or night to be able to go in and engage and, and bounce ideas of, uh, off and so on and update each other on developments that are taking place. I'll stop there for now. Thanks. So thanks, um, S.G. Taylor. Yeah, so I, I think um, what we are trying to do here, well, we've been talking about this for some time, um, trying to get the, the, the volunteers going, but obviously volunteerism in this is difficult. Yeah, volu relying on volunteers to get something like this moving is not going to um, move us forward. So is there an opportunity somewhere, and again, we, we see UNESCO in the room, there's others, um, the, uh, Maureen mentioned UNCTAD and their work in the said space. Uh, we have Aaron in the room. Um, is there anywhere that do you think we can leverage either existing um, work that's being done or probably work together to get something new done so that we can um, build this platform where we can put um, information, knowledge that is uh, has been going on because we've been doing this. Um, I know it's not a round table today, but we've been doing this round table for about, I think, going on 10 years now. Um, 
And where can we put this information? There's a lot of information about disaster preparedness, um, information about trying to to push um, SIDS issues and climate issues uh, moving forward. There, there are 50 plus of us, and I believe it's difficult for us to get our voices heard if we don't have something more tangible. Um, and for, for all sorts of reasons, we need to be more visible in the IGF space, and this platform will get us ready. And I think we need to understand that's what we need to do, and let's get it done, but we do need some help. Um, if we just leave it alone, it will just continue swirling around the drain, as we say. So I'm going to open up the floor now for the ideas. This is a round table in a room that's not a round table, but pretend it is for the time being. And it's everybody has an equal voice, um, equal space, you're all discussants. Uh, so let's get the ideas flowing. And hopefully, by the end of the session, we can actually get something tangible out of it. And let's act on it. Um, as as SG Taylor says, there is an event. I know events are not the way to do this, but events mobilize us, gets us ready. It would be fantastic if we can do something leading up to SIDS4, launch at SIDS4 with a SIDS IGF type environment. I said the idea of not being an event, but more of a platform that we can talk about, re release, launch, even feed into the, plat in the agenda that's there, and I know that um, Rodney has, has been talking to the organizers and the, the various um, pol um, political figures there. Maybe we can even get on the agenda itself and have it you know, sort of concretized in SIDS4. So those are the ideas that we, we start to play with, but I'm opening up the floor now uh, online and in the room for any thoughts on this, and I'm going to ask the online moderator, Ro um <laughs> Maureen, are uh, there any thoughts coming in? And um, maybe just over to you. Don't forget to use the mic. I'll hand this over to you. S sorry, Tracy. Can I just for two seconds just say that um, I think part of the, when I look at it, part of the thing is that we have engagements in silos. So we have the DC SIDS process within the UNIGF. We have, um, well, the UN, of course, has its process for SIDS. We engage, we Aaron has continuously engaged the Caribbean. Um, it's had a, uh, Aaron in the Caribbean, I think it's called. Right, so and that's on, but that's the American registry side, and um, so these there are silos. Not, I mean, not deliberately, but I mean, the American registry is the American registry. Um, I can, of course, try sustain its lane. So I can doesn't even really recognize SIDS. They are recognized underserved regions, um, and uh, I, so they don't necessarily want to hear about SIDS, or they're not going to set aside say resources to deal with SIDS. They're going to look at underserved regions, and certainly. Um, there are topics that they will not touch because they're not outside of ICANN's scope and mandate. Um, and then, of course, we engage with LACNIC as well, and the same, same thing happens. LACNIC stays, stays within the space. So how can we rise above all of that and say, okay, well, you know, we're working together across all these different you know, spaces, and, and we want to maximize the few resources that we have um, and better coordinate our, our interventions. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rod. Rodney, um, and we've actually got two two hands up here. Uh, we've got one from Janelle Lake and um, and Shuri. So we'll have Janelle first. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Hey, everyone. Um, it's, it's actually two o'clock in the morning here. You know, um, actually three three ten in the Caribbean. Um, but happy to be a part of this discussion. It was just last year that I I volunteered to assist Sherry with the development of this shared digital platform. And I think I, I tempered all of our enthusiasms when I asked about requirements then. And, and I still ask about requirements now because I come from a very practical place in IT and um, you actually don't get very far with anything, with any implementation if you don't have requirements to start off with. Um, it, it's, not, it's not fun coming up with requirements, but it does definitely help to establish where you want to go. Um, it helps us to come to uh, an agreed place in terms of what success looks like. So I don't know if these things exist, and I'm just too new to the party to know it. Um, but I would suggest that we start off with some requirements, some basic requirements, at least that would help us to establish what it is we need. And we would know where we're going wrong. It would help us in terms of our whatever potential alliances or assistance we could get from the likes of UNESCO, as was mentioned earlier. I think it starts off with having those requirements. So if anyone could 
indicate if we have those, that would be great. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Um, Cherie. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, I saw Janelle stands up, so I knew and I remembered that uh, we had this exact discussion last year and uh, uh, we tried to look for a platform. And I think uh, uh, one of the questions that we have coming through one of our uh, uh, site discussions is uh, when we're talking about a platform, how easy or simple a platform we're looking at, because uh, you know, if we want somewhere to be able to store something, then Google Workspaces is there. And I know that through uh, for previous speakers of board, we had uh, uh, Gina who had access to these kind of workspaces. And so, is it uh, as easy as uh, uh, you know Google Docs with the uh, a checklist of things that we want to get done by the end of the year? Uh, again, how simple, how easy of a platform we're looking at, uh, and you know, is, is it something that we, we could just find it that easily and just go with it. Uh, looking at there's an event uh, next year. Uh, I, I feel like, and an, uh, maybe we should just have two or three people that are willing to look for something, look for something and uh, come back and uh, report to people what, what are some of the, the pros and cons and options around something like this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Cherie. Um, one of the things that um, I actually sort of like was um, asking someone to, if they would actually mention it, um, with a, is that uh, within um, Pick Sock, for as long as I've been involved in Pick Sock, and that was since 2006, so it was happening before then, um, they've had a mailing list. And this mailing list is, it, like, I mean, there's always something um, happening within the Pacific and one of the members will actually raise this on the mailing list and they it starts, it initiates discussion, um, it initiates sort of like, I mean, there's, there, are, um, co uh, there are topics that are raised that, um, that people sort of like uh, make suggestions of or someone might have a problem in their, on their island and they raise it um, or it might be a technical one someone offers support and um, you know uh, uh, offline support it's that kind of it's that sort of like kind of um, uh, uh, activity which is used by the members and they they it's very much it's very much engaging because especially depending on what the topic is um, as to how people um, you know sort of like want to want to participate but it has been very successful for us and and as I said um, it's been going for many years, and it's still a very, it's, it's still a very active um, sort of like activity. Thanks, Maureen, um, and thanks, um, Janelle and Sherry, for continuing to volunteer to volunteer to, to help us with this. We really are pretty appreciative of your efforts to, to get this moving. So I think today is going to be the day we get it moving. So I am very confident I'm not going to come back here in our hands in Riyadh next year and have to discuss this again. Um, that was what's going on. I have to change the name of the, the session to something else. So um, more thoughts. And I, th I, I, Bevel voting from Aaron caught my eye. And I think Bevel wants to say a few words. And Bevel, I know, has a lot of creative ideas from way back in too long to remember about getting stuff done and how to get it done. So I'm appreciative that he's going to come and Save us, Bevel. Save us. Help us. <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank you, Tracy. And I'm so good to be back in person um, at the at the SIDS discussion. Um, there, there are several things that I wanted to, to raise around this issue of the, the platform, and a lot of it came out of the points that, that Rodney made concerning the, the overlap between the organizations and their various attempts at staying in their, what he, what he referred to as their lane. Um, when, we, when we consider the, the level of, of synchronization in terms of priorities and issues between, for example, the Caribbean and the Pacific, um, you get a sense of the diversity of the issues that fall under this SIDS umbrella. And so when you consider, or when, when I consider the the platform, two questions come to mind. Platform for whom to share or to do what? And, and it's, it's two simple questions, but they're two very important questions in figuring out where we go and how we go forward. 
um, it may be that there, are, there is a need for several types of platforms. Um, it may be that some of the underlying issues uh, inside of mapping the SIDS landscape, particularly as it relates to research and as, as it relates to the curation of content, um, may become uh, more important than actually the, the, the nature of a single platform to do something. And, and so I was thinking about um, what would be the best place for us to start. And uh, I know Janelle said um, we need a requirements document, which I think would be very, very helpful if we were looking to use or build a platform. But I think there's a step before um, even that, which is just understanding um, what is the nature of the kind of interaction we wish to have and with whom. There were some very interesting dynamics coming out of the work in the Caribbean over the course of this last year, particularly around engaging new audiences, for example. And, um, and you had organizations such as ARIN, uh, the CTU, CARIBNOG, the Caribbean Network Operators Group, and others attempting to find what we can call the intersectionality between issues. So not just the IT side of it, not just the civil society side of it, not just the political side, but how these things interconnect. And in that context, where a new audience is being engaged and, and where we are trying to, to tackle the issues in a pragmatic way, um, having access to information is important, but also having platforms for interaction particularly across the silos, is just as important. And so, so to me, when I think about the, the issue of uh, a platform for the dynamic coalition, um, it comes down to where do people get access to information, who is collecting that information, and, um, and who is collating it so that it can be interpreted or understood by audiences that may not have the technical background, that may not have the experiential background, or that may not simply uh, be fully aware of how the things that they are doing connect with the things that others are doing. So Maureen, I heard you with the, the mailing list, and I think for a certain crowd, mailing lists work very well, but for another crowd, they don't. They're confusing, noisy places where, um, where it's, it's very difficult to track um, what is happening and what is intended to come out of what, what is happening. So again, a mailing list may be important for one group, but it may not serve the needs of all of the groups. So is it in an arsenal or is there a toolbox of, of, of tools that we're looking at? Um, is it UNESCO combined with um, existing um, common platforms like um, Google Drive and these things? I, I think we have to, to ventilate a lot of those issues some more um, before we figure out what is the composition or the constitution of a platform for what we're trying to do. Thanks, Babu. Um, yes, all valuable points and all the points that you've raised, I think we've tried to, 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 to get to the, you know, the, the nit, the, the under the, 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 I don't know what's your word, that's under the surface of it. So is it a Google Doc? Just put stuff down. Um, we have a mailing list already, so we have, let's check, check that box, but that's only myself posting stuff about coming to this, this meeting. So, so um, there's a there's a there's a there's a need to have a we are, we are a dynamic coalition, dynamic coalition. The dynamism needs to get moving. So how do we get people to really want to get involved and put what's going on and not wait twelve months to come and report on what's happening, but let's get it moving, talk about it, talk amongst ourselves. Um, share experiences sh and want to share experiences. So, so the requirement is, quote unquote, or the what do we want is something that drives us to want to share information. That's the requirement. And whether it be, a, I don't know, a sandbox that you can sit down and play in literally, or whether it be a Google, I don't know. And, th and I think that's the challenge we have. Um, so we're looking for help. What can we do? to make it work, and let's get it moving. Because I remember we talked about a website in the past, talked about doing a database of sorts, but nothing has uh, kind of moved from there, so we talked about it. Um, but let's let's get it moving. So um, seeing some eyes and hands starting to get moving, so just looking around. Yes. I do have Michelle on, on, my, um, on Zoom. Michelle? Well, morning, everyone. It's quite early here in Jamaica. 
Um, I certainly agree with all that has been said, um, Tracy, Bevel, and Janelle. I was wondering whether or not uh, an, uh, there is an opportunity for us to focus our efforts on, for example, the GDC. And you have this uh, major meeting that is happening next year and whether that could then now be something to drive us. And what one can do, having re reviewed the, the GDC is, uh, I think that it, it certainly is a global position that is being taken, but can we look at the various um, areas that it covers and see how SIDS might be affected? And since there are eight areas that um, it covers, could, could we consider um, whether or not having sort of group subgroups that deal with the, the, the various areas um, and and to begin to identify what might be some of the challenges that SIDS might face um, towards those commitments that uh, the Secretary General of the UN is advocating for and even therefore what might be some solutions that we may be able to come up with for our own benefit because I think going into the future conversations on GDC, for example, we, we need to be clear about what the challenges are. It's, it's a place where I think your, one's voice can easily get lost if, if one is not clear and cogent about what the challenges are and probably to be able to offer some suggestions. So it may be um, something that can help us to focus our efforts at this point. It may not necessarily be the final um, constitution of you know whatever um, structures we want to put in place, but I think we we can perhaps use the material, for example, that's already in the um, proposed in the Global Digital Compact to focus us to give us a starting point. Because I think sometimes when we start from scratch, we we end up just discussing or going around the issue, but not necessarily. Um, making any sort of significant headway as to uh, whatever might be the objectives in terms of identifying challenges and, and, and proposing solutions, et cetera. Over to you. Thanks, Michelle. Yes, yeah, so you know people who, who suggest things get volunteer to do them. So thank you, Michelle, for volunteering your, your good services and time to help us get this moving. We'll add you to the list. Um, so thank you for that idea, and let's let's move with that. I think let's, let's take it on board. Soul, um, um, I think I saw. Was it Nigel first? Yes, Nigel would like to say a few words. Nigel from the, the dec deputy secretary from the CTU. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, I had put up my hand basically. Well, I I could change and say what she said. You know um, that we do have. You yourself said events mobilize, you know? Um, and we have two big ones th next year, right? So we could focus on the two big events and see what we can do to maximize our inputs to those events, right? Um, Janelle talked about what are the requirements and Michelle talked, Michelle pointed out that there, are, there, there is the developing GDC that we could look at what that could kind of focus attention. And I'll also say, um, at least for the Caribbean aspect of the SIDS, we do have the Caribbean Internet Governance Policy Framework, which identifies priorities and some policy recommendations. So all of that could feed into giving people ideas of, as to what the requirements are, right? What are our needs? And um, certainly at the global level, we have the opportunity of the GDC to put some of our needs in there or, or to advocate for some of our needs to be addressed in there. And we have SIS-4. The thing about SIS-4 is that its scope would be broader than just ICT, right? But at least um, everyone recognizes the importance of ICT for all development these days. So uh, that's another opportunity for us to focus uh, the development uh, priority recommendations into uh, the, into the SIDS4 work as well. So I think out of that we could get some reasons for people to share information, right? As well as um, maybe a little energy to get some work done because we have these big things coming up. 
and uh, hopefully after that we'll be able to keep it going with the the ongoing events that we would have like the CIGF or um, other events of of organizations in in the SIDS world thanks thank you very much Nigel I saw Bevel you wanted to say a few words Bevel? yeah just just off the back of Nigel's comments um, because I, I think the events provide an excellent way, uh, an excellent opportunity, sorry, for us to uh, mobilize around. Uh, and there are, th there are three areas that can be very practical. Uh, one would be the collection of the documents, reports, research along thematic areas, mm -hmm. in which case any basic site that allows us to do that will suffice. The second will be around who's doing what where, a calendar of upcoming activities. Um, and I think all of the organizations that are under this umbrella uh, would be in a position to submit their, their things without too much stress. You know, you're organizing an event, you want to promote it, and there's a place to, um, to put your, um, your calendar entries, this can be it. And the, the, third, area, the third component, if you will, uh, of this feature set would be the interactivity. Um, and I, I think there are a number of very interesting new platforms for us to look at in that regard to to, to, to one, deal with the conversations among those who know, but also to engage those who may be unfamiliar with the space and are trying to, to get their feet wet. So again, that can also be organized along some standardized thematic areas. So if you look at those three uh, components, you can, you can actually see how organizations such as the CTU, such as RN, such as Caribnog, can take responsibility for the part that they're, they're playing inside of it without too much strain, um, but still have this meet me point where you can see all of the submitted documents or refer to the links to all of the um, important references, see the calendar, and then have the opportunity to chat either by joining a mailing list, joining a WhatsApp group, joining a Discord channel, for example, and, um, and have the conversation happen where persons are most comfortable. The key for that, though, of course, will be someone to curate it and see well, what's going on over there and should we bring this to, to the central place. But I think having those three distinct um, components would be a helpful way to organize uh, our thought around what the platform um, can be and what it might look like. Thank you very much. Um, Maureen, thank you. That's excellent. And I think um, I'm just going to come back to that point as we get close to the end because we're looking for someone in the room to sort of get it going. Maybe see that it may not necessarily money but maybe just start it moving so i'm going to like look around pointedly at somebody might be on my right see what might happen along those lines but before that maureen well i just wanted to sort of like support um what uh, it was just said because i think that it i think it's um follows on from that um the term I use is, um, you know, sort of a platform cooperativism, and I think that that, I mean, that sort of like implies a very multifaceted kind of platform, and it's something because, if, you know, I mean, we've obviously identified that we need to have something that's actually sort of like quite diverse, and it needs to, you know, it might be partly website, partly mobile app, partly sort of like, you know, sort of sections that that actually cater for different types of community, you know, tip different types of groups, different topics. I mean, y you know, it could be topic-based, it could be whatever, because we, you know, the, the things that we actually cover within the SIDS communities is actually, you know, quite diverse and isn't just sort of like IT, but as, you know, as Nigel pointed out, it's, it's very, IT underpins so much that, it, you know, it, it, it's going to be part of it anyway. But um, you know, I think that this is yeah. We we need to get some kind of brain tr brains trust um, together um, to to sort of like devise something that um, it could be you know sort of like quite um, quite innovative um, and something that really matches what we need to um, in order to progress what we you know said this is this is a goal for us. So um, yeah, let's. You just keep looking around there, Ralph. I'm looking. <laughs> Um, Tim Allard, I think um, the key takeaways you're grabbing there, this is going to be the last, well, the key one now, because I'm going to ask colleagues in the room to really step up and see well, how we can get us moving. So the rapporteurs are going to record. What's the key takeaway from this? I'm going to ask around the room and see if anybody wants to volunteer who is going to get this moving and who might have some resources available to help us. 
Anyone wants to volunteer? Anyone wants to volunteer? Thank you. I'm not volunteering, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the truth is, I mean, I know we're all very busy. I, I, we've been working with some of the young people that we um, that we have uh, we met in the in the um, what was it called? Generation Connect, uh, the WTDC initiative um, of the ITU, and um, I think there's potential there. I mean, they're young, bright people. They're not necessarily fully engaged or fully employed or not, you know, to their maximum potential. And I think they'd be willing to sort of make a name for themselves by giving us some time and effort uh, and, and some sweat into helping us move this forward. Yeah, and um, you know, we of course with our support and so on. But I think it is important that I think we could leverage some of these young people to help us just uh, to keep the discussion going, help us manage platforms, um, draw stuff, you know, help to, to coordinate. Um, so that's my, that's my suggestion, that we can look to, le not just in our from the Caribbean, but of course across the CIS network, um, and give them something to be excited about. <laughs> At the same time, it's part of our, our, our mentorship as well with them, and I, I so that's my suggestion. Thanks, Rodney, but I'm still going to be the devil's advocate here. We need someone to coordinate that or to get it moving. Do you have any suggestions who could do that? Anybody you think might help? Well, Nia's is doing a lot of working with young people. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the name that's been suggested, just for the record, Nia, her surname is Nanan, just for the Brit Rapporteurs, just to catch that. Good. Thank you. Maureen? Yeah, I'd just like to mention that we actually have uh, Denise, Denise Hockbaum in our, um, in our audience, and uh, she's in charge of the next gen. Um, and we were just talking today about, you know, like that there should be, you know, like what we should be doing is encouraging, uh, in order to retain um, these wonderful young people, is to give them a project. I think we found our group. Yeah. Denise, they're all yours. What do you reckon? Maybe you can respond to get you on the record. Get you on the record, yes. Okay. Uh, we're talking about uh, the a possibility to develop uh, projects uh, created by the next gen. And I think it is a little complex because you have to get some permissions about uh, the procedures and by ICANN. But individually, they can be connected with us. And also, at the end, the, the program, the next-gen program, they have a chance to build up something more consistent. And the same way, o, o fellows, the fellows instead immediately left and apply for another uh, turn, they build up something more uh, consistent and clear for the next uh, moment uh, and for ICANN, ICANN, ICANN fellows. So you're talking about uh, this very quickly, and now she put me in the spot, I was terrified. <laughs> so this is why uh, I think you can elaborate, and then you'll be very happy to, to listen from the guys uh, your suggestion in the future. Thank you very Thank much. Yeah, we appreciate that. And, and that could be the part where I can, who is not sitzing, will get sitzing, get, get, get sitzing now. Um, so um, I know Albert will try and do something, work on that before. I think I'm seeing Aaron stepping up to the mic, so that sounds like good news. Uh, thank you, Tracy. I, I wanted to come up uh, to be sure to distance myself from a call for volunteers, but I do have some <laughs> observations or some comments. Okay. Um, I wanted to make sure that this group was a, 
aware that there are grant opportunities from Aaron Lacknick and the APNIC Foundation. And uh, I don't know about the timing uh, you're talking about next year. This year is practically done, so there aren't gra grant opportunities for this year. But, but be sure to look at those opportunities next year on, the, on their websites. Could be something to help uh, either with the determining the requirements for a platform or for perhaps even building one. I also wanted to, um, it just came to me that uh, you might look at the ITUD regional office for the Americas to see if that could be uh, a resource or some support for this activity. And then I've been to CTEL meetings and I have to admit uh, um, I didn't pay as much attention as perhaps I should have, but the, there have been SIDS discussions at CTEL uh, a number of times and to reach out to uh, the CTEL friends and see what they might have um, one of the things they're, they're for sure going to have is contributions and case studies about um, uh, this activity. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, so getting some some very good good ideas and I think some good traction here. Um, we got our ten minute wind up call, so I'm going to make one last call for any um, further comments. Uh, I don't know if UNESCO wanted to have any um, further observations. Haven't heard uh, your guests, so you've heard what you've had to say, do you have any thoughts as to what um, can possibly happen given what you're doing? Uh, I know you have content, you're doing a lot of content, but is there any opportunity to sort of, you know, use what you're doing to sort of get into this um, and, and reach into this, this said space a little deeper and help us maybe, um, you know, seed this further? Any thoughts on that? Thank you. There was a mention of uh, including the government, for example. I mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm facing the camera, but. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there was a mention of uh, involving the government. Actually, if we come down, uh, so my, my I'm leading the work of the internet governance uh, there, and if we narrow it down to that uh, area, so uh, bringing together all these st stakeholders could uh, somewhat contribute to it, but I understand you're looking for a more uh, broader solution. There was a mention of regional offices. Uh, UNESCO, for example, has national and regional offices. For example, we have an office in the c uh, covering the, the Caribbean. Uh, we have uh, regional offices in Africa and we have a regional office in the, in the Pacifics. Uh, so this uh, this could be something to look into, and at the headquarters we actually have um, uh, we have colleagues uh, working with SIDS. So I would be happy to connect. Uh, I I can't guarantee um, at this stage, uh, you know, but I'd be happy to put you in contact with these colleagues. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so I think we got some good work done today. Um, any final words? Um, I'm gonna actually ask Maureen to wrap up, so give me a heads up. But um, any final words from the rest of the the audience online or in the room? Um, any hands up that you're seeing? Any anything in the chat? Okay. So I think today we've gotten really good um, traction. Got some names. We got actual things that can get moving, and we have mobilized around events next year. So 2024 sounds like the year that we will not be coming back into Riyadh and saying, what are we going to do next? We're going to be saying what we've done. And this is, here's the platform. Here's the thing that we have built. Here's what we have um, shown. And here's we're going to take it forward. So let's, let's make that happen. And I know we have our volunteers online as well. Janelle, um, Sherry, we're, we're coming back to you. Michelle, you volunteered as well. So don't, don't forget Ania, who's going to call all of you into a room along with the Generation Connect folks and let's brainstorm this. And we all get involved, you know, we're all part of this. Um, but um, I think it's really useful to, to, to pre press it forward. All right, so she was away from the mic, as I'm seeing here, but she said, just repeating it for the record, that meeting will happen this month because there's the Caribbean News Network inaugural meeting happening. Exactly. So perfect. Um, but we're going to definitely add 
the SIDS component of that. Um, so the Caribbean will get it going, but we're gonna bring the SIDS and the Indian Ocean folks on and they're gonna work with us, right Maureen? Over to you. I don't have much el else to add, but I do want to thank everyone for, for, for sticking it out till, till, till the end. And thank you, Rodney and the team, for, for being here for us. And um, we'll be working hard together this year and, and working on, on the ideas that have come forward. Thank you so much. Meeting adjourned, thank you. <laughs>